Dear Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus the Christ, we come, Lord. We honor you, we praise you, we, we magnify you, we, we love you, Father God. God, we come before you tonight thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. God, we praise you, Father God, for another chance to look at your word, study your word, to be blessed, be blessed by your word. We ask you, Father God, to bless your word to fall on good soil. We ask you to forgive us for our sins, bless our lives, bless us to be about your business. We thank you, Father God, for this another chance to dive into your word and hear from you. Lord, we ask you to speak to us now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. We thank everybody for joining us tonight for our Bible study. We again in 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5 is where we are tonight. 1 John chapter 5. Thank you so much for joining in with us. Uh, we, are, we are in 1 John chapter 5. It's where we will begin on tonight. We realize that in 1 John chapter 5, the Apostle John is again telling us about who we are in Christ Jesus. He's reminding us as Christians or Christians who we ought to be, how we ought to carry ourselves, and what we ought to do. And so in 1 John chapter 5, in the previous pericope, which is verses 6 all the way to verse number 13, he talks about eternal life. He talks about the Son. He very simply says that if you have not the Son, you have not God. If you have not the Son, you have not peace. If you have not the Son, you have not eternal life. So we're going to pick up tonight in verse number 14. Let's close out with verse number 11 through 13 and see what, what he says to lead up to this conversation that begins in verse 14. And it's gonna, you're going to see that it is, it is good to, to bag up and to realize where we are if you have forgotten on last week. Verse number 11, uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse number 11, and we will read to verse 13, then we'll pick up on the pericope for tonight. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He talks about the fact that this is the record, this is the testimony, this is the witness that God has given us eternal life. This life that God has given us only comes through the Son of God, through Jesus Christ himself. There is no way to have eternal life but through Jesus Christ. He constantly, John does, constantly reminds us that he's the Son of God. Jesus Christ is God's only begotten Son. This word begotten, as we see it in John 3, 16, means that God's only unique son, God's only begotten son, God's only son, one of a kind son. So this word, God's begotten son, only begotten son, his one of a kind son, it, it is his unique son. So John picks this thought up and John says to us tonight, that you can only have eternal life through Jesus Christ. Regardless of what the politicians say, regardless of what the special groups say, regardless of what the special interest groups say, regardless of what entertainers and broadcast celebrities say, we know from the word of God, there's only one way to God, only one way to eternal life, and that is through the Son. Jesus the Christ. Verse 12, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son does not have life. Verse 13, the last verse from last week's pericope says, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. He says he's written these things to you so that you will know you have eternal life. There will be no question about your eternal life. There will be no question about who you are in Christ. He says, I have written these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life, that you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life. What he says to us tonight is that we must believe in the Son of God, Jesus himself. 
If we believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus himself, we put our faith in him, our hope in him, and we believe that he is the only true son of God that gave his life as a ransom for you and me, that died on Calvary, rose early that third day morning. If we can believe in this precious son of God, then and only then we will have eternal life. These things I have written unto you who believe in the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the son of, of God, in the name of the son of God. We must continue to believe. Don't faint, don't give up, don't give out. We must continue to believe in the son of God. Now remember, as we go from one pericope to the other, there must be a continual flow. I'm emphasizing this because as we get into these next few verses, you will see where many have gone astray, many have gone awry, many has be, have looked at this text in a way that God is not tremendously giving it to us, has not truly given it to us. We have misplaced this text. Let's go into it. Verse 14, and we will stop at, at verse number 17. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 through 17 is where we are tonight. Remember all that we've talked about. The greater one is in you that is in the whole world, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We are the witness to the one who is greater. We believe in him, and because we believe in him, we have eternal life. And that life in him is through his son, and his son is Jesus Christ. So we believe in the son, and as we believe in the son, we realize that we can only have eternal life through his son. His son is Jesus Christ. Let's look at verse 14 through 17. First, first John chapter 5, verses 14 through 17. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. He says, this is the confidence that we have in God the Father. This is the confidence that we have in God the Son. This is the confidence we have in God the Holy Spirit. This confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. God does not turn a deaf ear to us. God hears us. Somebody been praying, and they've been praying a long time, and you're continuing to pray. Let me just tell you, if you're praying in God's will, with the right motive, God hears you. First John, James all agree that if you pray with the right motives, then God can hear you. What is your purpose for your prayer? Is your prayer in God's will? And we, in the modern day society, we know God's will through God's word. And as we apply God's word, then we know that we're in God's will. This is not the prayer you pray for a new car. This is not the confidence he's talking about. He's talking about intangibles. He's talking about a relationship with God. Remember now, in order for the pericope to be true, the whole text has to be true. And the text has talked about, all the way from verse 1, knowing Christ Jesus, being born again, having victory through him. You can only have victory through Jesus Christ, through the Son of God. You may think that you have victory, but you just exist. You're not really living. When you have the victory, you must get the victory. You must gain the victory through Jesus Christ. He goes on to say that Jesus bears witness. The Son bears witness. The Son bears witness that the greater one is in us. He says that this is the testimony that we have eternal life. We have eternal life through Jesus Christ. It has to flow. You can't jump up and say, I can have anything I ask. He says in verse 14, 
Now this is the confidence that we have in him. We have confidence. We have the assurance in Christ Jesus. We have confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, first of all, he hears us. It didn't say he's delivering it right then and there. He says, God hears you. Somebody need to know tonight that God hears you. I want to tell you, keep praying. Stay focused. Be in his will. Stay in his word. God hears you. We have confidence. This word confidence is assurance. We have the assurance in Jesus Christ that God hears us. We must first of all believe on his name. The name of Jesus the Christ. He hears us. What it says. Verse 15. And if we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask. We know that he. That we have the petitions. That we have asked of him. Whatever we ask. We have the petitions. Of what we have asked of him. Here's the point. Don't get so involved in having it your way. We must pray through God's will. And the reason why I keep saying the pericopes have to flow. You have to flow from one pericope to the other because throughout this lesson, he talks about, throughout this chapter, he talks about his son. It talks about being connected with God. It talks about us growing in Christ Jesus. Therefore, when we pray, we ought to pray in God's will. And it is God's will that none shall perish. It is God's will that we grow in Christ Jesus. It is God's will that we do not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. Therefore, we must keep praying for ourselves that we walk in his will. We must keep praying for others that they turn to his will. We must keep praying that men will see God's will, obey his will. And as we walk in his will, as we keep his commandments, he hears us. The first thing he says, he hears us. And then if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we have asked of him. What should be our petition? In this pericope, our petition should be, God, draw me nearer unto you. In this pericope, our prayer, our petition, our request must become, God, draw somebody else to you. Our petition must be of such that we're looking for God to bless us spiritually so we can bless others spiritually. We must pray in God's will. We must have confidence and we must be compassionate in prayer. This is not your house, brand new house prayer. This is not your brand new car prayer. This is your prayer that you pray God, I know I'm in your will because your word says it. God, your word says that none should perish. God, your word says your will is that men will come to Jesus Christ. God, your word says that men would get to know you in a very real way. God, your word says that as we walk in you, we show forth Christ in us. And as Christ is shown forth in us, then God blesses us so we can bless others. So our petitions that God's, God is hearing from us ought to be petitions, Lord, save my neighbor. God, give him eternal life. God, bless him. Bless her. Bless my coworker. Bless my enemy to get to know Jesus Christ. We're still praying at the, at the New Beginning Church. We're still praying that God not just reveal the enemies of our church, but God bless them spiritually. Bless them to get to know you. Because as we witness for God, 
as we tell men about Jesus Christ, as we set our souls on fire so we can set on fire the souls of so many others, let me just share with you, God will be pleased and satisfied as we introduce people to Jesus Christ. We have our petition, our petition. Lord, bless us with 50 souls for Christ. Lord, bless us with 25 souls for Christ. Lord, bless us to, that we will be able to bless others spiritually. That's why the teacher, the preachers are held to a high standard because we ought to be about God's business. And God's business is to win souls for Christ. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. What's your prayer? Who are you praying for? I challenged, I challenged our church a few weeks ago to identify 10 people that you can witness to, 10 people that you can Ten, can pray over 10 people that that God is leading you to to minister to and I need you to pray that person into salvation into eternal life pray with them walk with them minister to them uh, uh, wrap your arms around them bless them and be a part of your life so much so until they can see your example and turn toward God God wants us to pray the prayer for eternal life. Eternal life. We, we need God to minister to this broken world in such a way that men turn to Christ. On Sunday mornings, we, we're dealing with, we, we're dealing with uh, uh, Revelation. And last week, or last Sunday, this, this week, Sunday, we, we dealt with the four horsemen. And, and we dealt with the fact that that Satan wants to be on the throne. He wants the Antichrist to rule, and he she shows up riding on a white horse, and he wants people to think that he's a god. Matter of fact, the Bible says that there will come a day where the Antichrist will sit on the throne, and he will command people to say that he's God, and he will call himself God. That's why we ought to witness. That's why we ought to minister to people because the devil is on the rise and he's riding and we haven't seen anything yet. When we talk about, about the book of Revelation and you see him, the, the Antichrist riding, riding on this white horse, he is deceiving mankind because we have been taught that everything white is right. Not the case. The devil wants to deceive us to make us think that he's right. We ought to be praying, Lord, bless our eyes to be open. Bless somebody else's eyes to be open. Lord, I petition you, I request of you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask you to bless every single person that doesn't know you. And then we need to get busy witnessing to those people. Our prayer ought to be, Lord, I want your will to be done. And I want it to be done, and I want you to know that I want it to be done. And the way you're going to know, Lord, I'm going to get out there and share Jesus Christ to all mankind. A matter of fact, I'm going to pray, Lord, bring somebody my way. And we call their name. God, bring that person my way. Not so we can argue the Bible, but bring them our way so we can witness and we can pray for them. God gives us our petitions based on whether or not we in his will, whether our prayers in his will. God wants you to pray in his will. And the only way for you to pray in his will is to pray through his word. Pray over his word and pray his word. That's why we send out every Monday morning, we send out a brand new chain of, of, of scriptures that we ought to be walking through the word every single day. It's studying his word that God can lead us. And his ultimate goal is that we will get to know God in such a way until we can lead others to get to know him. So our prayer ought to be, Lord, 
above all things that you give me. Give me freedom. Give me peace within myself so I can give somebody else peace with God. Give me, since I'm saved, give me the peace of God so that I can pray and so that I can lead somebody into peace with God. You see, when you have the peace of God, you calm in a storm. But those who are not saved need peace with God because they are still, they are still, they are still at odds with God. And when men get to the point where they say, God, you're right and I'm wrong, then we have the peace with God. And we, are, we as Christians ought to have the peace of God. The reason why Solomon was so blessed, he didn't just ask for, he didn't ask for horses, he didn't ask, ask for a new woman, he didn't ask for a new house. He said, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom in how to go in and out before your people. And for that alone, for him focusing on what God would want him to have, because he focused on the will of God, God gave him wisdom above all men and all women, and he gave him great riches. You see, you don't, don't just go and get riches. You ask God to give you wisdom because a fool in his money will soon depart. You can be rich overnight. You can have a lot of money overnight. But if you don't have wisdom, a fool in his money will soon depart. This is the confidence that we have when we pray and we request, we have petitions, that God hears us and God will grant us our petitions. Verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. Look at what it says. It says, verse 16, 1 John chapter 5, verse 16. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which does not lead to death, he will ask, and he will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. God wants to give us eternal life, and he wants to give others eternal life. Here, keeping in the flow of the pericope, keeping in the flow of the text, keeping in the flow of the chapter, He's talking about sin. He's talking about men getting closer to him. And sin takes us far away from God. And as sin takes us far away from God, there's a great gulf between us and God. Sin breaks fellowship with God. Man can't get to God. God can't get to man only through his son. You see how it flows back to the son? Only through the son of Jesus, the son of God, Jesus, can we get to know him? Can we even confront someone else? Because when we confront somebody else, we ought to confront them in love. We ought to confront them so God can speak through us. We cannot and we should not talk down to people that's in sin. We ought to have compassion. We ought to show love. We ought to show love because we got the confidence that God will deliver. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin that does not lead to death, he will ask and God will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. In other words, the believer asks God and God will bless the one who's in the midst of sin. If anyone sees his brother sinning a sin which, is, which does not lead to death, he will ask, who will he ask? He will ask God. And he, who is he? God. God will give him life for those who commit sin not leading to death. God gives life. God gives eternal life. 
but we have to be compassionate. We have to be loving. And we have to pray for the right things. This is not the same, same type of prayer that, that you quote scripture says that, that the affectionate, fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Yes, that's true. But in this pericope, God wants us to pray for the soul of mankind. God wants us to, to lift men before the Lord. It says if you find a brother in sin, if you find a sister in sin, pray for him. God will bless them. Pray for him. God will change them. But it's in prayer. And it didn't say that you got to pray and expect prayer right away. Your prayer to be answered right away, rather. Yes, we want God to answer now. We ought to pray that God answers now. But when God does not answer, it may be weeks. It may be months. It could even be years. But because you have the right motive, because you have the right thing in mind, because you have the right frame of mind, you're going to keep on praying. You're going to keep on asking. You're going to keep on knocking. Next part of that verse says, verse 16 says there is sin leading to death i do not say that he should pray about that he said that there's sin leading to death let me tell you some sin <laughs> leads to death some things that we get caught up in we don't stop it until death. And once they're gone, once they're dead, we no, no longer pray, need, there's no longer a need to pray. We ought to pray as a person live in sin. We ought to pray. Their sin leading to death. I do not say that he should pray about that. We, we need to pray. He just said that we need to pray when one is in a sin that doesn't lead to death. God is offering us life. The devil is offering us death. Don't get caught in the midst of death. And if you're going to pray for somebody, pray for that person that their eyes will be open, that they will turn toward God, that God will give them eternal life. If you think their lives are raggedy, then let me tell you, pray for them. And don't just pray for the situation. Pray that God changes their hearts, that they will see, they will understand, and that eternal life will change them. Man can't change on their own. It must be through eternal life. It's only through eternal life that we're saved. A lot of us will testify today that we wouldn't fit to even save the song, songwriter said, God thought enough of me to save me. Let me tell you, we don't have enough of us to save me. God thought I was good enough to save me. God knew we wasn't good enough to save. None of us are good enough to save. But we're praying. We're praying for somebody. You ought to have 10 people minimum that you're praying. God, number one, save them. God, number two, get them out of what they're in. Number three, God bless them that they don't die in the midst of it. Lord, turn their hearts around. Lord, turn their hearts toward you. The church ought to be praying, not gossiping. The church ought to be praying, not talking. If we're going to talk, we ought to talk to God and tell God about it. When, when God, the Bible says, he hears us. When we pray in his will, he hears us. We ought to bombard heaven. God, we hear you. And now, God, we want you to hear us because we know you hear us. We have confidence, God, that you hear us. Wayward child, God, I'm calling on you because you got the answer. Spouse not doing right, God, I'm calling on you because you have the answer. Sickness, God, I'm calling on you because you have the answer. But above all of that, God, I'm calling on you that you can save lost souls. It becomes an evangelistic message. It becomes a message that we can pray over others, pray for others, and watch what God does. 
It's such a joy to watch God change the lives of others. We witness so we can see the beauty of God. We witness, we testify of his goodness so we can see the beauty of God. So we can see God turn hearts toward him. Verse 17, and I'll leave you alone. All unrighteousness is sin. <laughs> Point blank. And there is sin not leading to death. Let me, let me just share with you tonight. Everything that's unrighteous is sin. There is nothing unrighteous that's not sin. Every single thing that is unrighteous is sin. Everything. I don't care how you paint it. I don't care what you call it. It's sin. See, because we, we got a way of pain sin now. We, we have a way of suggesting sin to not be sin. And we have sin that we pick and choose that is sin. We have sin that we put here and a sin we put there and we have measured up our sin. But the text declares all unrighteousness is sin. Everything is sin. All of it is sin. All unrighteousness. Unrighteous thoughts, sin. Unrighteous act, sin. Unrighteous tradition, stuff you've been doing all your life, sin. Let me just give you one example. Ouija board, sin. Another example. Zodiac sign, sin. Horoscope, sin. Lying, sin. Cussing, sin. Fussing, sin. Not going to church, sin. Whenever God commands us to do something and we choose not to do it, it's sin. Whenever God tells us to stop doing something and we still do it, it's sin. The text declares that all unrighteousness is sin. Paint it whatever color you want to. Call it whatever you want to. All unrighteousness. Guess what it is? It's sin. Every bit of it is sin. And it doesn't matter who's doing it. Whether it's the saved or the unsaved. If it's unrighteous, it's sin. It is our responsibility to not judge those who participate in sin. It is our responsibility to call on God on behalf of those who are stuck in sin. And if we were to tell the truth, every now and then we get stuck, we get trapped, we, we get tripped up in sin. The Apostle Paul, one of the greatest Christians to ever live, the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 7 that every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. He says, I see a law in my spirit, man. I see a law, and this law is leading me in the right direction. Romans chapter 7, and he says, in my mind, in my body, there's another law bringing my members into captivity. And he says, that's sin. If I yield to it, it's sin. He says, I'm struggling. How many of you are struggling tonight? How many of you are going through some things tonight that you really, really wish you had the victory in? The text the class, verses 1 through, through 17, says that we have victory in Christ Jesus. And because we have the victory in Christ Jesus, we ought to be able to use the power we have in him. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. He, he lives in us. He walks with us. He tells us that we are his own. The Holy Spirit takes care of us. We have the power in us. We have strength in us. We have vitality in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. We have to allow him to lead us, to empower us, to grow us, that we can empower someone else and grow them. And then the Holy Spirit can empower them that they can empower somebody else. That's how we're going to beat this foe, this foe called the devil, this foe called the Antichrist. We can beat him by way of the Holy Spirit. And there is sin 
not leading to death. We need to understand that Jesus Christ made it possible. Jesus Christ did it for us. And we are here to call on God on behalf of somebody else. Jesus did it for us. He died for us. He was buried for us. He rose for us with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. That same Holy Spirit that raised up a dead Jesus has empowered us. As you go to the doctor, talk about Jesus. As you go to work, talk about Jesus. Because somebody at work needs to know him. If you're there getting paid for 8 to 12 hours, do your job for 8 to 12 hours. But one of these days, God is going to open the door in the lunchroom. He's going to open the door for somebody to sit with you. And that's what you ought to be praying about. Lord, as I sit here, thinking about the goodness of God, lead one of my coworkers to me that I can minister to them, that I can talk to them about Jesus. As you walk your neighborhood, as you get in shape, ask God to bless you to, to help somebody else get in shape with him. I told you on Sunday, if, if you got robocallers calling you, talk to them about Jesus. They either listen and be saved or they'll get off the phone. Either way is fine. But you got to share Christ. And you got to pray. You have to pray for the soul of man. If we're going to change this world in the state that it's in now, it doesn't matter who wins the presidency. It doesn't matter who the next governor is. The only reason the world is in the state it's in is because Christians are not praying. The Bible says when we pray, he hears us. The Bible says that he ha we have the petition we ask of him. Let us pray. That the Holy Spirit will bless. The Holy Spirit will move on the hearts of people. Let us pray that God delivers mankind. People kicking down doors. People shooting people on the side of the road. We need to get people saved. We need to become ambassadors to save people. We need to be praying for the lives of people. Yes, prayer works. Prayer makes a difference. Jesus paid it all on Calvary. Now all to him we owe. Sin left a crimson stain. But Jesus washed us whiter than snow. We need to make sure that we pray the will of God. And the only way we can pray the will of God is read the word of God. We have to stay in the word of God. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. If you're not saved, if you cannot remember the time that you confess Christ as your personal Savior, this moment is your moment. God has isolated this moment for you to get to know Jesus in a very real way. And you can get to know him right here, right now. Right where you're sitting, right where you're standing, right where you're lying, you can get to know him. All you got to do is believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for you and me. That he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And he rose from the dead with all power. The Holy Spirit raised him. God raised him from the dead. And if you can believe this little simple story, and put your faith, your trust in Jesus Christ. Believing this little simple story. You can be saved right here, right now. You don't have to have any mystical stuff happen. Just trust the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You can be saved right now. Will you bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life? Will you bow your head and ask Jesus to come in? Because the saints of God are praying for you. We are praying that you receive Jesus as your personal Savior. But it takes an effort on your part. That is to trust him. If this is you, will you bow your head with me today 
and just repeat these simple words after me. Say this, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose again. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We believe if you prayed this prayer, you're now born again. We believe that you're going to heaven when you die. We believe that we will rejoice on the other side with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If you prayed this prayer and you, you've been born again tonight, we want to hear from you. Inbox us and let us know that you've been born again. We want to celebrate the Lord with you. And if some of you are outside the ark of safety, don't have a church, you need a church. Every person needs a good doctor, a good lawyer, a good teacher, a good ch church, and a good preacher. I recommend the New Beginning Church, where Jesus is the center of attention and the main attraction. I recommend to you to let us know, inbox us, and let us know that you want to get to know Jesus even better. Let us know you've saved, but you need a church home. Foxes have holes. Birds have nests. Those are their homes. Every person needs a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for being a part of our, our service. Next week, we'll pick up at verse number 18 and end out this chapter in 1 John chapter 5. Thank you so much for joining us. It is now offering time. You can give uh, financially in two means. Number one, you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is that as we lift Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself, according to John 12 and 32. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zelle account. Also, you can mail in your offering, your gift, to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of this service. Would you join us tonight as we lift up the New Beginning Church and all our members? We want to pray for health and strength. We want to pray for financial blessings. We, we want to pray for the desires of their hearts. We want to lift them before the Lord. Will you join me tonight in prayer? Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you for your Bible study. We thank you for your word. We thank you for being a part of our service and being in the midst, Lord. Now, Lord, we ask you to touch every heart. Bless us to get on fire to winning souls for you. We thank you for those who have acknowledged Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now, Lord, we pray for those who are out of church, that they would get in church. Those of who those who have been using excuses, we ask you to touch their hearts and turn them toward you. We pray, Father God, that you continue to bless us and keep us. Lord, we ask you to bless our church, that our church will reach forward, that our church will pray the God type of prayer, that our church will pray the will of God, and that people, men, women, boys, and girls will get to know you in a very real way. Bless our youth and our young people as they go back to school. We ask you for protection. We ask you to give them health and strength. We pray, Father God, that they stay focused. We pray, Father God, that they go through school without hurt, harm, or danger coming near them. We pray, Father God, that you stay the hand of the devil, that every young person will enjoy this school year. Father God, we pray for the administrators. We pray for the teachers. We pray for the aides. We pray for the janitors, Father God. We pray, Father God, for every principal that the office will run good and that the campus will run safely. We pray, Father God, that those who make decisions, even at an administration building, will be touched by you. Now, Lord, we ask you to save souls. 
bless every person under my voice to adopt people that they will pray for and people that they will witness to. And Lord, we ask you to have your way. Bless us, Father God, as we go and keep us in your will and your way. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only strengthening God, unto him be power, be glory and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, amen, and amen. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.